Greetings, greetings. It's time for this week's live stream. I don't know, maybe it'll be weekly. It's kind of whenever. Uh, so today I'm going to work on a floral. I've already mixed up a few colors here that I think will kind of help. And I can kind of do some small adjusting, mixing here along the way. Uh, here's a, anytime you're painting floral, there's a couple of different uh, ways you can take it. You know, I'm kind of making a nice big piece, and so I'm going to take it pedal by pedal. Um, a lot of people don't do it that way, and with good reason. I mean, you want a lot of brush energy when you're making a floral, and so they'll kind of start out with a, a big broad shape and then slowly pick out some of the stronger and deeper values and some of the highlights. That's a great way to do it, too. That's not how I'm going to do it this time. I've done it both ways, and, you know, I think there's reason to do both. So... In, in this video, like I said, I'm going to talk about taking the pain out of painting florals or flowers. And we're going to do it by just kind of one-to-one, -one, kind of picking out one shape, like one, one petal shape, and then just building that one shape up. And then from there, moving on to the next one and to the next one. Sometimes I might say, hey, I've really got a particular value on my brush, and I'm going to use that in all the places that I see it. That's another great way to do it too. Um, a lot of different ways. This is just one approach. I hope it uh, helps you in your next floral painting. So let's get started. I went ahead and established what I felt like were the like the lightest value in the flower. So these really light pinks in this range. And then I've got this really dark kind of warm, a lot of lizard crimson in there. There's a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. Um, possibly even, I, I can't remember what all what I mixed and kind of making some of these dark values here. But then uh, they needed to go a little darker, so I mixed them up some more. So anyway, let's let's get started. So hopefully by the end of this video, you know, it's two two some hour video, we'll have something to uh, to look at here. So I think since I on my brush here, I already have. Um, uh, you know, I might use a bigger brush. I kind of thinking I might just like to go a little bigger than that. Let's see. This, uh, this may seem excessive, uh, but you know, this is about the shape and I can kind of use the edge to really um, build up some, some more areas here. But um, if you have questions as I'm working, you know, please uh, stop me. I'm, I'm watching the feed. I may be talking about something for a while, but just hang out and, uh, and I'll field your question. So let's, uh, let's see how far we can get and see if we can get to some smaller details. All right, uh, I've got um, a few colors mixed and we're going to get started dipping into a little bit of thinner to start off with i've got uh chelsea classical studios lavender spike oil medium uh sitting next to me and that's what i'm using so let's uh i'm, I'm kind of feeling out i got these little dark here i'm going to choose the next kind of darkest space that i see i'm going to take a little bit of this that i mixed i'm going to mix in um make it just a little lighter with uh some of the color that I have. Uh, so this is, this is uh, primarily white and uh, alizarin crimson for the most part. And I'm going to try to kind of search out some of these. So auto automatically, I kind of laid this in. That feels good for about right there in this particular petal, but down here uh, it gets much darker. So um, I'm going to come back into this one. I'm going to pull a little more alizarin crimson in there. Let's see. Um, I mean, that's a really intense color down there. Um, I'm hesitant, but you know, one thing about florals is it's hard to overdo it on chroma because a lot of times uh, there's just a lot there. So this is very red, um, kind of this shadow uh, in this one particular one. And kind of like I said, I'm just focusing on this. I'm trying to kind of isolate myself to this section right here um, and knowing that, okay, I'll, I'll get to the rest of it when I get to it. I like that. I think that's doing all right. I'm going to go ahead and just put a kind of a mid value to meet meet those two spots. So I feel like it's kind of nice, deep, and dark here. And then, when, you know, as it kind of comes around here, it gets a little lighter. Um, let's see. Well, the it was kind of an overcast day, and suddenly the light changed. Uh, the sun came out, and that might really mess with my camera exposure here. So... If things start to get blown out, um, I might have to take a quick pause and do some camera adjustment. 
Um, so here we are. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see. Uh, it's not looking too bad. All right. Um, I can kind of lean back. <laughs> I can see. So I'm I'm still looking to this one pedal, and I'm saying to myself, "All right, uh, how does how does this work? What's what's going to be a good move here?" And it's a really hard brush. I cleaned it. Just going to get a new brush going. It's a little a little harder than I anticipated. Okay, now it's given some. Um, so I'm going to look at this top part of this one pedal and uh, you know it's some of the colors I've already mixed we'll say it's about right there um, and you notice I, I I put this little uh, water droplet that really wasn't there in the uh, original photograph but I was like oh you know I want to drop this little water droplet in here um, give it that kind of fresh misted uh, floral look and I mean it's at this point it's kind of a you know if you look back through art history it's a it's almost a caricature of, um, you know, everything was always, um, you know, so fresh looking and the artist would intentionally put some of these elements um, on, on the, uh, on the still lives that they made to, you know, just kind of blow people's minds. And in fact, it's so overdone in art history. Uh, my plan is like up over here. I'm gonna do just kind of one big water droplet that looks like it's on the surface of the of the canvas. And it's just kind of me nodding to uh, art history and saying, um, "Yeah, it was you know it was kind of funny and overdone." Um, so so right now, like to me, that's like, hey, that's a good start. You know, we can come back and refine that some as needed. So uh, I'm not really sure why I picked that one in the middle. It just kind of called to me. Uh, I usually trust that instinct when it, ha when it happens. Um, and so now I'm looking at um, this uh, next one here underneath it. And uh, you know it has, basically I'm kind of gonna run two brushes, uh, like a little darker value and a little lighter value. And you know I'm gonna pick out this, uh, there's this really, I just drew it a little bit, that's all right. Flowers are, are pretty forgiving when you when you, when you misdraw them, um, you know, uh, un unless it's just really weird. Most people don't ever know. So, just a little secret between you and me. I misdrew a misdrew a petal. Don't tell anybody. Um, okay. Uh, so so all I did was I kind of took a look at the edge here. Nice light pink. Got a little darker and a little less chroma, so it's not as intensely red as, say, the area in here. You know, you can kind of see just how red this is. As compared to this, is much more pale. So I kind of laid that in. And then this little part in the light, we're probably going to have to come back in with that uh, and get a little more serious. Um, now, as this goes into the shadow, we do get some of that, some of that similar kind of pink and, you know, the true test will be whether I decide to like really pull out all the stops and try to get that kind of light uh, that's shining through on that on that opposite side or, or you know can you see the light shining on even though we can't see the light side of this pedal you can see kind of it's like glowing in there that's that's always fun to you know if you really cue into some of the visual information there you can really capture those moments and you know those are those kind of it's going to be a little bit of a wow factor, you know, like, whoa, I didn't know you could kind of make light shining through things uh, in, in oil paint. It so it's kind of surprises people. Uh, so, so I think, again, that, that's pretty good. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to keep working next to one another and using these as a little bit of a guide to choose my color on the next one. Um, and you know, yeah, yeah. This it, it can go south. It can go wrong, um, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna work to try to avoid that. So I'm looking at this color underneath here, the, underneath this petal, and you know it gets darker, and it's kind of bluer, but it's also you know pale. You know, I mixed. Uh, I had some color um, on a previous painting up here. I'm just gonna probably use a little bit of that here and there. It kind of turns a little, almost like kind of a pale 
ochre kind of in here, almost has some kind of greenish color to it too. Um, so like just looking for that little shape in there, you know, I've laid that in, you know what I want to do now? I want to find this light side that's just curling right up into the light. That's one of those really, it's going to be one of those fun spots that really just, you know, we, we, we suddenly feel, feel the light there, you know, and the fact that, oh, well, that, but that light does not go back in there, but it, you know, kind of curls up here. Um, a lot, a lot of this is just following that, that contour, you know, following the contours of the topography of each one. So, you know, I, I got that light side there and I've just taken a little bit of a darker value and, and put it in on this side. Another, another fun thing is we got a little bit of light hitting uh, this inside there, but it's it kind of looked, so these are the sort of comparisons you can make for a really successful painting. Let's take a look here. This is it's a nice pink, you know, really intense pink. It's very beautiful. But then this side in the light, it's not as light as this. So this is going to be a little darker than this. It's also going to be a little bluer. And and so I can take a kind of, I take a look at some of the colors that I mixed up and, you know, I have some that are just a little bluer, a little less light. So I'm going to drop that in. And that kind of it fades into another pink. This is just uh, some of the variegation here in the petal. So beautiful. Um, one of the reasons why, you know, jokingly on my, my thumbnail for this video is talking about how painters <laughs> always paint peonies. Uh, it's funny because we do. It's ridiculous. Um, but it's because they're so lovely. So what can you say? Uh, this the shadow on the side seems to be a little lighter than this uh, than the center here. So I'm just going to lighten that up a little bit. Uh, I'll still pull in some of that just to kind of bump up against there. Now, if we if we've kind of done what we set out to do, you know, we should start to feel I mean, it, it's kind of starting to get there. We don't really have very much information yet, but we should start to feel like, okay, this is really feeling like it's kind of going back underneath or this is, you know, or this petal sneaking out to catch a little bit of that light. You'll know, you'll know it when it happens, you know. Okay. Moving on. I'll, I'll, we're just going to keep moving on. So there's going to be these little decisions here and there where like, here's another little bit that's in the light, but it's, you know, that light's getting a little diffused. So it's kind of underneath there. And some of these areas that are still, this is, a, this is what I call the ground layer. This is just a wash that I put down first before I ever began. And I like to try to get all that covered. Sometimes it's okay to leave it out, especially if you give it a tone rather than leave it just direct white, directly white. So I still want to give it some coverage, uh, even though, I mean, you, you know, the value is all the same down there. It sort of runs together, but I'm going to give it all the same, same tone if I can help it. Or, or just get coverage, I think is a better way to put it. Right, let's uh, to go left or to go right. Well, let's let's go left. Feels feels contrary, but I, I'm gonna do it. You ever do those things that uh, just feel a little contrary? You're not really sure why. We'll see if it's a mistake. Sometimes it's a mistake. Sometimes it's good. There we go. Nice, nice big. And and you notice too, like I, um, that you know, nice big stroke there. You can use use that to your advantage, um, where, you know, I want to get rid of some of that. I just made that a little farther up than I wanted to. Um, you know, obviously we're painting a form that has movement. Uh, you know, each one of these petals swoops up like this, and so you know, you can take your brush and you know make that happen. Um, you know, don't be too intimidated to just 
you know, take out, and this is a, this is an 18, this is a mixed synthetic by Utrecht. This is uh, their 239 series, really like these. Kind of my, kind of my go-to brush. Um, brushes, you know, just find a brush that you like. A lot, of, a lot of people get die on hills of using certain type of brushes. Just find the one that works for you. There's reasons to use different ones, but you know what? I don't know that that matters until you are well into your painting career. Then you can begin making those decisions. Don't worry about it right now. All right, I'm getting a little bit darker here. Might go a little too dark, but it's all right. I just need a little lower value, a little darker value underneath that petal. That was important to get some of that detail later. All right, we're still at it. You know, I, I kind of pulled that one around. I haven't gone on the inside here, but I thought, hey, while I'm in the neighborhood, how about I just kind of put this one in here. I made it a little darker now that I look at it than painted it a little darker than it is in the reference. Um, you know, it's, we can we can lighten up that top a little bit. Let's do that. You know, even though it is lighter, kind of went a little bit too far. Um, and that the value of the kind of background color there, it's all just sort of running together. So I don't mind giving those some really nice soft edges. And looking at that back side of that petal that I was working on and just noticing I really I got to get some coverage right here. Yep. And, you know, still kind of, you know, each stroke is following the mark there. I don't know that I did that on these. Here, it really felt like it needed it. All right, this goes down a little bit. It deepens into space here. We have this really nice, it's kind of one of those moments where it might be worth it to just, okay, hey, let's get out a, a bit smaller of a brush. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go make it really small, just really quick. Uh, there's this uh, kind of deep, deep dark here that just it's, it's in there. I'm gonna get this little liner out. I'm gonna put that in because it's one of those nice spots. You know, there's not a lot of areas on here that get uh, really dark, and uh, I, I like some of those areas. Just they just if you have um, a little bit of varying and varying areas of contrast, you can just really Kind of send some areas are back in space. So I'm gonna just put that little spot in there. We'll, we'll come back to it. It's gonna need a little more work, but yeah, I couldn't pass it up. Remember, I'd love to field your questions if you have any. If you're seeing something, or man, if you're seeing something that's really wrong, you're like, wow, you don't know what you're doing. Uh, that's fine too. You can give me some feedback. I I appreciate it. I'm trying to find this deep color, deep color back here. Um, we're going to be using a lot of just just realized we're going to be using a lot of alizarin crimson in this piece. Um, right now we're just working on the darker side of of the blossom, and you know we're going to work our way into these you know brilliant uh, light areas here. And, and then when I'm get, getting ready for some smaller detail, I'll get out some smaller brushes. But right now, I just really want to get um, things blocked in. Um, it's always helpful to me to, if things are mostly covered, I can decide on what needs work and what worked the first time. Sometimes just laying down the color, you know what, it worked. And I, I love that because it's a lot of, time, a lot of times those moments are really a gift. And... Uh, 
can say, all right, hey, that's good, that's done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on uh, working on things. I can, I can leave that be because it's already good. And then sometimes areas need a little more, a little more heavy lifting. I got this area here. It's, it's in the light. Um, and back here, it might, I just kind of felt the mood. We're going to jump back into this area. Some of this here. Yeah, we're gonna do that again. It, it kind of does a similar, similar thing. You know, to the to the point of like the first time it worked. You know, there's something nice too about you know using these big flats and just laying in a, a pedal and it just being you know one or two strokes because sometimes it it really has more of an organic feel. You know, some of the best floral painters do that so well. You know, you can see like Daniel Keyes um, and Michael Klein. So gifted at, uh, at kind of seeing those important parts um, and, and dropping those in with just a flick of the wrist and done so well. Um, I don't, uh, flowers aren't my forte. So, you know, I'm, I'm much more of a figurative painter, uh, but what what happens in some of these areas though that I that I do like that I fall in love with, you know these these pale pinks, you know I, I find them so many times in the skin tones I do. Uh, so sometimes it's very it's really um, it feels, you know, like an extension of, of figure painting, um, but you know I I will admit, I'm I'm not uh, not a Daniel Keese and I'm not. Michael Klein, these guys are so good at what they do. All right, that's a, ooh, probably overdid it there. Yep, it's all right, we can knock that back down later. Or, you know what, sometimes, even though it wasn't there, you know, it just, it just ends up working. Um, we'll see. We'll see where we have to come back around and handle that one. I love these like first 30, 30 minutes to an hour of each, uh, of each stream. Um, it's like no one has the patience to hang around. To, wa to watch the, the the moment when it turns um, and then you know kind of when everything is is more in place then then people watch some more but they kind of already missed the magic um, so so thanks for watching at this point you're, you're actually getting the most benefit out of uh, out of your watch time here because the rest is just fluff uh, this is this the heavy lifting section here where you know I'm putting in the stuff that's really going to tell me about the rest it's going to form the rest of the painting make this a little more pink but you know what it still comes back and a lizard and crimson this um and I, the reason I keep doing a lizard and crimson is that this the pinks in here are a blue. They're they're bluer, rather than a warmer red. Uh, so it's a cooler red, and um, it's exactly why I have the, the palette I do. So I have two reds, uh, cat red and uh, alizarin crimson. And so you know, depending on uh, which direction I need to go in a particular piece, I, if I need a warmer red, I can go that way. Cooler red, I can go that way. In fact, the whole palette is, is set up that way with a few oddballs, but for the most part, I've got a, a cool yellow and a warm yellow, and then I've got a cool blue and a warm blue, and you know these are my these are my couple of colors here just for some spice. But um, for the most part, bouncing those around um, 
are, you know, work well. Here's here's an orange, more or less, this burnt sienna, and one green I do have out. I like to have this green out because my palette tends to be more warm than cool, and that's a good equalizer. A lot of times I just need something to um, give me a little little more cool uh, when I'm when I'm working. So that's the palette. And then today I'm using titanium white rather than uh, lead white, partially because I just had it on the 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 easel or the palette. So I'm just going with it. Let's see. Even though for th things that are kind of semi-transparent, like like florals, um, skin tones, um, I do like to use lead white, transparent white, and I find it uh, very very helpful. So you know I've got this big brush here, but the nice thing about a flat is you know if I if I need a pinpoint, I can use corner. Um, if I just, if I need a, a thinner stroke like this, I can just kind of use more, mostly the edge or, you know, sometimes I can just kind of use the whole thing if I'm really working to, uh, describe things. This gets us a little bluer up here. Yeah. That's nice, that really kind of sticks out there. It's pretty. Okay, um, starting to get a little lighter than I wanted to. I wanna get this, my dark value in here. Oh, look at that. Looks like we're gonna deal with a uh, some a mixed, a partly cloudy day, so things just got a little dimmer in here. Normally that doesn't really bother me at all when I'm painting, but it can sure cause havoc on your your camera exposure settings if you're trying to remain consistent throughout a video. I think the sun's coming back though. We'll, we'll see. playing back and forth there. Lighter, cooler, lighter, cooler. I think, uh, I think I'm good now. I think I like the really dark. Hey, we're uh, kind of near in, near in that halfway uh, point, just about. So as we work around, a lot of fun. Kind of taking a step back, trying to decide what comes next, where to go next. So this particular method of, of painting floral, you know, just take, taking it slow, looking to fill out those, uh, those spaces that need it and kind of finish, finish your, each petal, each section as you go. You know, so some of these areas I'm like, oh yeah, I'm kind of losing out. I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow ochre, drop it in the bottom here. Flowers do have a tendency to kind of move from more of a yellowy center out. And you can, so it's just one of those things that's like, yeah, I see a little bit of that in there. So I'm gonna drop, drop it in. something I'm not talking about that you want to know about, drop me a comment later or, you know, feel free to mention anything right now. Gives me a little bit of a focus uh, while I'm working, which is always nice. Okay. Still kind 
of working around. You know, I had some of this uh, darker alizarin on the brush. It's a great time to just say, you know, I see, I see it right there, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. So I laid in that dark there. I thought, yep, this area is a little lighter above it. So I'm putting that in place. And then as it comes around, it gets, you know, it's going to get lighter still. Uh, but at least going that far. Always the nice thing about oils. I can come back to this. I can work it any much more I want to. I can let this layer dry. I can work right back onto it wet if I'm careful. Um, big, big fan uh, of the workability. Some people really don't like it, but I find to be so forgiving so even if you know today doesn't go so well which hey you know i i don't always have good painting day um sometimes it's sometimes it's a chore sometimes it's a chore and it seems like every section is hard fought and other days it goes well do have did mix up a little more orange but it's um, just kind of looking at it and it's way more kind of intense in the middle there we'll uh, we'll come back to that I think I'm quite ready to jump into that so let's see there's like you know a bunch of petals grouped together here these are these are some of those moments where I'm like well I think there's an overall movement here when i get into it i might be a little more specific uh, when i really start uh, rendering it but right now that, that overall shape um, is looking all right why but I was just looking over here and I said yes that's the next move and you know this this area in here where it gets really light you know it's like I kind of cake that paint on and make it nice and heavy and bright and looking forward to it you know, I haven't really dipped into my thinner at all um, and, and that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I'm not really working very, you know, I'm really just trying to kind of block in or kind of tile in the major relationships. And then, of course, kind of when I get there, you know, re re refining it more. But until then, it's good to just kind of lay, lay in these relationships. You know, really wanting, you know, there may be probably lesser detail back here, probably get a little bit harder edges up front here to really kind of send this side forward, that side back. Um, okay, I think we're ready to really lay in some light color I'm 
to mix up just a little more of, I'm gonna take white and alizarin. Yeah, I want this to be uh, as, as pure between those two as I can get it because you know, I just want it to be really intense. So, you know, I'm gonna kind of just slowly start working some of that in. a little bit of a petal here that's in the shadow and so I'm gonna gonna pay attention to that too. It's just getting a little too dry there. So you know, periodically I'll put a little bit of thinner on. And I'm just I'm looking for a certain viscosity. Um, but I like the paint body to be just thick enough so that it kind of stays where I want it to when I'm laying it in. We'll get specific about some of these areas up here where, you know, we have petals in front of petals and uh, I kind of I like to reserve that for time when it's time for a little more detail. Right now, those, those big relationships we're chasing. Be fun again. I, I again. I added that little water droplet there. It wasn't originally in the in the source material, so that'll be that's gonna be fun to uh, to put in. A little later, but that's gonna be kind of a topical application. We have to worry about, and that kind of qualifies as some of that small small detail stuff. We're just trying not to get too bogged down in right now. Kind of looking back, um, let's see, we're coming along, it's getting to where I want it. Um, These darker petals, I, you know, I like to just butt up against the the color back behind. Yeah, I mean, we can certainly put a little more you know, value. You know, this this area is catching some light, but you know, it's kind of falling back behind, and so we have to leave it there. Scanning. Deciding what needs attention next. It's a little bluer than I put there. A little more alizarin along this edge. Kind of 
it's starting to feel like um, that's a volume now and I've got some of this uh, light side put in. It's always an exciting moment. It's like, oh yeah, this is this is a thing. It's gonna it's gonna do something. like I had on my brush some of the areas that needed some attention so from while while in Rome go ahead and lay those co those colors down um, some of the other places that I see them this interesting ones in the sh shadow it's nice it's it's a dark that sticks out in front of the light and you know, I'll want to really get that when I when I come back around, but I think just initially doing a little bit of work there is going to be good. These are so reflective. It's always the, the interesting balance with working in oils or you know any medium for that matter is you know. Obviously, I'm creating a two, I've got a two dimensional surface and um, I have color, light, dark, I have a few things at my disposal, which I can start to tell the viewer about how things sit in space. Um, I'm always trying to seek that balance because there's you know, I don't want this to be so light that I lose some of the lose the color, and I don't want to put down direct light. And I want to keep um, about as much color as I can ha as it can handle, so that it feels like it's really light and glowing. And, um, and then, you know, so there's always you can only put so much white in before it's it's all white, and then you've lost uh, your color. So finding that kind of sweet spot is is, is always tough. I think I don't have, um, let me get, I do want some of these areas. And then it gets darker again. In, uh, in, the, in the petals over here. Picking 
kind of dark color and it, you know, it comes into the light uh, there, but it's very pale. And I'm going to do it again right above it. Yeah, one of the reasons for me to kind of choose to approach the floral this way, kind of taking it at a lot of time, is that I, I, you know, I can, sometimes it's hard to make out all the subtle differences. And other times it's, um, you know, it's very clear. You can see each one. It's like, well, you know, I think, I think I pursue a, you know, depicting each one. I'm still picking out places. See that you know, some, a lot of times what happens in these corners, I just didn't quite get it all filled in. So um, yeah, I guess I'm just kind of leaving the center for last. I didn't really intend to, but I guess it sort of worked out that way. Okay, I think there's probably been a few spots in there that I sort of didn't quite cover. This last petal down here. It's really beautiful. It's, it's so blue in comparison to the rest. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll want to find those spaces, but I'll, I don't want to overdo it either, because that's always just always bad. But, and, and another really dark area is here, right where the stem meets the base of the bloom. That does need a little bit of attention, so I've got uh, this kind of greenish gray up here. Take a little bit of Viridian with it. may need to go a little darker, but you know, that at least kind of sets, sets it back a little bit, I think. Kind of quickly gets into the light. But yeah, that's a, that is really in the entire painting, the darkest point of this spot right here. The rest is, is all lighter. Got a little bit of a warm shadow here in the middle of this one. Quickly 
little lighter to the center. And then there is a very pale light. I don't, let me see if I really have this made up. I don't know that I do. It kind of goes down the center. Looks pretty good for it. And then forks right here on either side of it. You know, really seems nice and brightly colored. And these are here very very beautiful i so an entire entire painting uh I, I kid you not i think my my favorite spot is right down here and when i look at that petal it just has these beautiful blues and then kind of pink oranges in here um and again i i put another faux uh, droplet right there because I, I want to bring some more attention. There's a few spots I really want to bring attention to here, here, and here. And um, so I, I'll, I'll put the kind of faux water droplet over the top of that. Just a little bit of guidance, you know, the, the viewer, you, you know, you've got a lot of power when you create art, uh, you kind of kind of tell the viewer where to gaze, where, where you want them to spend their time looking at the piece. And little decisions like that um, help, uh, help create that focus. light really goes right up to the edge here so you know okay I think um, and yeah I've got the leaf down here tell you what just to make an edge up to here, I'll go ahead and mix up a little bit of leaf color. Viridian, uh, yellow ochre, got some of this dark green neutral up here. Maybe I'll just a tad more Viridian. I'll bump up that, make it a little greener. Nice lost edge up there that slowly, you know, gets lighter as it comes down, but can I lay in a little bit of this color? Just about underneath. Mix in a little more yellow ochre. Give it a little warmer appearance. Um, while we're at it. green here. And 
I did have, um, let's see, if there was something like, like background. Yeah, I think I'm just bump this background color up to this edge here. The center. Let's do the center. I'm gonna get out another brush for the center because I know that um, I it's gonna get really orange, and I'd like to try to keep some of the more the cooler purity happening in this area. So I'm gonna break out. Another brush. Uh, one thing they don't have in the studio on purpose is I don't have any uh, like odorless mineral spirits or anything like that to wash my brushes. Part of, part of it is I just want as few um, kind of chemicals and off gassing happening in the studio. So just trying to breathe clear. And uh, and so I just grab another brush when I'm ready to do another section. Rather than kind of rinsing my brushes out, I just take another brush and move to that section. Um, so there's a lot going on here, but I can't really make out a whole lot of detail. I know that it's uh, pretty intensely orange here, and as it tends to uh, head its way, it's out. I can just see some of these little shapes. I'm not going to try to really overtell. Um, but you know, as intense as this is, I'm going to take some um, cad yellow, mix in some burnt sienna, and that'll give me a really strong orange. Um, you know, that, that is certainly darker than the areas around it, although it starts to kind of do the same value. So now these just start to get too small where I don't concern myself with uh, the detail in the same way that I will on each of the petals when I, when I begin working with those. So, you know, I'll, I'll describe a little bit of the breaks and, and the values that I see, um, but for the most part, you know, leave it. It's kind of fun. You know, I see these extend out here a little bit. And you know, some of those moves are all right. Um, don't try to do it too much. You know, if I really want to create some of this intense orange over here, take cad red, cad yellow, mix it, mix it together. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm someone who mostly does figurative work. And so to kind of make some of these colors that are, the chroma is so strong on them and so intense, I'm a little hesitant. You know, my skin tones are, are subtle, beautifully subtle, <laughs> to show a lot of restraint. Um, I kind of let let it rip. It's really interesting spot here in the middle. It's a purple. I like a few of these are like sticking out in the light. So I may just tell a little bit about some of that that I'm seeing. Again, I'm being very choosy. You know, if I kind of look at it, it's like, what are the main shapes happening? And kind of move through those.
a little bit of a break my own rule. So whatever this is in the middle, it is kind of maybe a little bit of cerulean, a little bit of cad red, get rid of a purple. light to it. Let's see. A few dark spots. Is there? I mean, they almost run together. That's the fun of this whole thing is to really to be a observer. You know, what's what's happening in some of these places? Try to puzzle them out to make a good painting. to stand up really quick and just take a step back because I think uh, I'm at a good spot to kind of think about what comes next. Really one of the only ways to do that effectively is to take a step back and look at it from a distance and make a, make a game plan for, for the next the next move. Let's see, we've been on for an hour and three minutes now and you can already tell that uh, we've come a long way in an hour. You know, if if we had to stop it here, we could. But you know, I want to take it a little further. And um, but it is, you know, we and and keep in mind, you know, this has only been done using just a few shapes here and there. We're just we're kind of following the trail. We're looking at each petal and kind of making the next move jump into the next one, not trying to get too bogged down and getting it right, um, but then you know, kind of making, again, the next move, the next move, the next move. All right. Um, I like the way it looks better on video than it does in person. <laughs> again, stepping back and looking at the video screen and seeing, uh, seeing it from even a further distance. Um, but, all right, what is my plan? So. Uh, immediately, uh, you know, this is me critiquing me. Uh, when I, every time I do this, I, I get just really, I can be really uh, critical of, of what I'm making in order for it to be successful. So I think right off the bat, what I don't have is, um, so you, you, you can look at this with me um, and, and you can begin to see how, how you can do the same thing with your work. You stop and kind of stick, you take a step back. You're looking at your source material, whether you have a still life set up in the room with you or um, you're working from a photograph, whatever that may be. So I'm, I'm taking a look and I'm saying, this, what I'm missing on the right hand side is light. Um, you know, I feel like the left hand side and most of the perimeter feels like it's really working. What I don't feel like I have is that nice light volume happening uh, on, on those petals. And so I think I'm gonna dive in there first. And you know, yes, that's, uh, that area we have we put, and, and by that I mean, basically mean this. Um, I really need to make this feel, you know, nice and light and rounded so that this whole thing comes out as a volume. Right now, it's not, I mean, it's starting to work like a one big volume, but not quite because some of these areas are just a little too dark. And I have that tendency, and, and it's good to know your tendencies when you're working. You know, do you tend to make things lighter, darker, warmer, cooler? Um, and I, I tend to make things darker than they really are. So I'm gonna jump in probably on this side and I'm gonna work on some of the details here and we'll see where we get in the next hour. I, I like to try to limit these to about two hours. I mean, anyone who sticks around for as, as long as some people do watching these, you know, God bless you, it's a long time.
Um, so I hope it's valuable. Um, but here we go. We're going to dive into that spot and see about how far we get. We'll probably uh, hang up the uh, hang up the hat around four, maybe a little bit after four, central time, not on central time. So 45 minutes, 40 minutes per hour, see where we end up. Try not to bump anything as I get back in my painting position. All right. Here's a good here's a good time to kind of think about. Here's where uh, effects like glazing and things like that can you can do some things that you just can't quite do in um, with just painting. A la prima or kind of in a direct method that I'm doing because um, all I can do is mix color uh, I can't quite do some of the effects of like if I were to lay this in really white and then come back over the top um, you could do some pretty wicked stuff uh, not doing that we're just kind of aiming to get this as it is and so I'm gonna come in pretty hot and heavy in kind of in this area here and and then I will bring bring that back around. So this got this just got a little dull here. I think that's that's part of it. It might be advantageous for me to if I can find my tool. Hmm, that's another problem misplacing your instruments. All right, we'll just use a paper towel. Rub this out a little bit. So that I don't have to work back on top of kind of some of that some of that dull paint. I said I do have some of Chelsea Classical Studios lavender spike oil and meat lavender spike oil medium. I will just use a little bit of my medium to kind of give the brush a reset. Uh, but I'm gonna kind of use my same light brush. And then when I'm trying to create the most intense color that I can make, I like to get out my palette knife and rather than use my brush kind of get out the palette knife and I'll take about as pure as I can just some of my my white and I think we're gonna go directly I mean I'm grabbing small amounts here but you know I I know you're saying, hey, don't you have some of that mixed already right over there? Yeah, pretty sure I do. Um, but sometimes dipping into it with a brush that has other things in it, you just lose some of the purity. So I wanted to create this color right here. And it may not be quite enough. We'll see. But I'm trying to find that sweet spot where I'm still getting a lot of chroma from the tube colors, lizard and crimson. Um, and, you know, not just don't want to get too chalky. So I'm going to load it up here and kind of lay it in. So already it looks darker than I think I would like. It's a couple ways forward. I can lighten it more, which I'll probably end up doing just a little more, or I could kind of darken the rest. You know, those are, those are, those are the choices. So I'm going to just lighten it just a little bit more. My, my palette is 
talking about a lim what they call limited palette, and which is great for skin tones. Um, you know, sometimes you really need some of the whacked out halo colors to get some um, florals that look really can't help just because they're so off the charts. Um, and I'm gonna pull that off a little bit from the brush and we'll dive in again. See if we got a little bit. Okay, I like that. Is that feels a little lighter? but it also feels, it still has some color. Okay, I think it was struck a, a good balance there. Um, and so I'm gonna take that, and you know, this really does wrap around quite a bit here. You know, and I'm just, I'm just kind of, digging in here you can see you know it's a lot of a lot of paint on there you try to give it a little more uh, paint body um, just kind of in this area I want to really build this up because this, this being really the, the most kind of intense area that I'm, that I'm making There's a little, I'm gonna use it to rake down into this some, um, because this is, that might be part of what's kind of ruining. This is nice, because it's, like I said, it's kind of a dark shadow against this light area behind it, but it might just be stealing some of the thunder in here. You know, if it goes quiet, then you're like, Jeez. it's getting it's getting intense. All the uh, all the faculties are engaged in that moment um okay so i want to try to do just a little more tell you what for fun let's go ahead and put that uh solely for fun this is like way out of order um but uh don't don't tell anyone don't tell anyone i did that Create the little water droplet here. So out of order. Don't don't tell my art teacher that I did this. In fact, if you're if you're watching if you're watching Jill, don't uh, just look away. Look away. Breaking all the rules. She told me not to break. Okay. 
that shadow. <clears throat> And then you have to put in some of the well, those highlights on the other side here. into the brightest white that crazy little highlight there it's, it's dripping down let's carry that up just a little more Still looking around in some of the areas that I think uh, I didn't quite get as intensely light. So we really want the light to feel like it's coming from this side. So, you know, I bumped up and built up some of the lights here. Um, and I think the next area is, is over here. So I've got this that I mixed up here. And I'm just going to kind of put some of that in here. You know, that really catches a lot, goes a lot farther there. Originally did it. <clears throat> Up to there, here. Maybe even on the edge of the well, and this even like kind of tilts up and keeps it away. So this piece, along with uh, a few others, is going to be an exhibition. Um, so trying to wrap everything up um, in, in the coming days. tries maybe even over the top we'll take almost a direct tad red for some of these deep spots and that was I think a good move because um, they are dark uh, you know they're darker than these other areas but you know there there's so much in the light that you know those or well, there's just so much reflected light and things happening that, you know, that helps that out a lot. <clears throat>
And I think just on some of these edges, I just have not put the amount of color that really needs to be in it. So, and I have a tendency to mix my color. It needs, you know, I'm trying not to overdo it. You know, I mean, that happens. I think of the rest of the painting, you know, doesn't quite work, especially on a, on a floor. All floors are really clean. You need all that chroma because, you know, the color is bouncing around, the light's bouncing around, and then you're getting these really intense areas that are really so beautiful. Um, I can try to recreate some of those. You know, this is the time in a painting where I just jump around a lot. So, you know, I'm kind of moving from spot to spot, trying to find you know, just some of the little things that I've missed. Um, and this is also where, you know, the painting really starts to unfold. Um, so I'm noticing like, hey, I didn't really have as much chroma. I didn't have as much in color intensity in some of these areas. So I'm going to hunt that down, chase it down, put it in there. I wasn't thinking about uh, just how much chroma that flowers have. Um, for me, it's very, very much into as much as this is like, okay, hey, what, look there, what did you see, put it there. I get that that's kind of what it seems like and how it looks like it works, but you know, a lot of, a lot of it's an intellectual, like I've got to, got to think about um, the tendencies and the, the things that um, depict, depict me in order to make good decisions, informed decisions. of these are edge problems. I see some things happening in the edges that you know, I just didn't quite get. This is also the, about the time where I start to make a few decisions like, oh, let's, let's make a distinction between this petal and this one here. Um, and then, you know, then it's like, okay, yeah, that, that's good enough. Let's, let's, keep, let's keep rolling.
and now I'm really dipping into a lot of uh, just straight tube colors. Make sure if you watch any of my other videos, it just does <laughs> doesn't happen. Um, but also know that right now that's where I'm going to get the punch that I need in a lot of these areas, which I, I just didn't put enough color down. And by put enough color down, I mean enough chroma. Chroma is uh, color saturation. So for instance, you know, this wash around here is, it's kind of a low chroma green. So it is a green, it's kind of a green gray, um, but there's not a lot of its um, kind of native hue in there anymore because it's been mixed with so many colors. So it's very, you know, very dull. Whereas, you know, any of the tube colors that come directly out of the tube are very saturated um, and are highly chromatic and a lot of times almost too strong to be used by themselves. So you always want to mix. Florals, it's kind of one of those things that changes up just a little bit. Where now you're looking for more of those tube colors, more, more of the intensity. more light falling back here especially on this side well that'll remain nice and deep and dark back there but you know we'll catch a little more light on some of these edges here the light is uh, bluer it's not as and it's very pink and this light back here is, is more bluer it's another thing that can really help you in, you know, if you're, if you're trying to paint the things you see, um, you're trying to give something space where it really looks like you're creating something three-dimensional in your painting. Um, one way to, you can kind of um, stack the deck is by using um, warm colors and cool colors. You know, warm colors come forward, cool colors go back. Uh, and that really, you can use that. So if I kind of create a little more warmth here, you know, the, and these are a little more cooler, those will sit farther back. This warmth will, will move toward us uh, for the next text. Okay, I really, I'm gonna pick out a few more spots here that I really want to, to get. So this, um, this area here that's like reflecting um, some light, you know, I'm going to try to do 
just put a little bit of that in so we can get some of those effects. I'm just gonna happen back here, happen to back here. On the whole made it all a little too dark. Definitely happens. It's kind of an edge of a petal. I, I, I'm hesitant sometimes to kind of get the edge of the petal in only because if I, it's like if I do it here, I kind of need to do it in other places. Um, we'll see if that stays. That may or may not stay. No promises. All right, there's a few areas of uh, some kind of uh, some darker spots that I, I want to get. Um, if you're if you're on, you know, probably going to spend about another 15 minutes, uh, and then then probably log out. So um, let's see, some darker in there. Take a different brush. Let's see. A little green. Pick some burnt sienna. Kind of offset that green a little bit. Create a little more depth down in there. Still get some lizard and crimson to you know, kind of build. Fill that dark up a little bit. It's just nice to have a few deep spots. I mean, that was that's way more than what's there, but sometimes just putting those in, get, uh, get a little more depth, pushing that uh, dynamic range a little bit. And you know, that can really feel deep down in there. And then that way these lights are coming forward, those darks are kind of sitting and moving back in there. Yeah, to me that's that's going okay right now. Let me get out my light brush and you know, I got this little spot here that really came into the light, the rest of it didn't. But I want that feel of that one little edge. This is easy, this is easy cheesy. I'll get out a uh, little liner brush and maybe pick out a few 
see those deep areas. I can feel like maybe I missed out in here somewhere. So really, kind of from here, you know, things uh, will they will just continue to refine. Um, probably stay until four, stay on for another twelve minutes. But the the battle, the main battle, is over, um, and and things have been kind of described um, successfully, uh, and you know, really just capturing the main parts. You know, that's all that I want to do uh, in kind of the block in phase. You know, from here, I can take it as far as I want. You know, I can continue to describe little details. Um, you know, I, I kind of put in this little edge here on that pedal and I thought, ooh, I kind of like that. So suddenly that made me think, well, maybe maybe I'll spend a little more time uh, on each of these and, and um, get out a smaller brush and define them. This is only one way, uh, there are many, uh, to, uh, to uh, paint florals. You don't have to, you don't have to do it this way. I just thought it's kind of, it's not too much of a headache to break it down and spend a little bit of time on each, on each pedal, just kind of, you know, lay in the pedal that's next to it and, and just kind of keep going until until it's there. Um, so hope it was kind of helpful and kind of thinking about how you approach your next your next floral painting. Whether it's peonies or 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 you know there's obviously so many varieties out there. Um, so there's different different approaches. You know, this is this happens to be mine. It's kind of more my figurative uh, painting approach, which you know, I think it works okay for for florals. I mean, I don't know that it's necessarily uh, the best way. I think probably it would have been a little better if I had just kind of made a big mass of mess in here and then slowly started sculpting out some of the the petals. But I thought, well, I think sometimes. Just to take a little bit of the, oh, I'm, I'm afraid to engage this and it's, it's intimidating. Um, just to take some of that um, mystery out and just say, hey, uh, this is totally doable um, with just a few um, few things to focus on. It takes you, it takes you a long way. So I will. Continue working on this. I'm going to be releasing this painting and probably a, a handful of others. Um, next, uh, a little bit, uh, maybe next week or so. Um, got an exhibition at the end of this month. Um, and uh, if you'd like to see those, you're welcome to join my Patreon. Uh, that's where I share my new work first. Um, you you might get a chance to see them all done uh, on Instagram. It's hard to say, but they might show up on Instagram a year later. So it all it all varies. And sometimes uh, sometimes I share what I'm doing. Sometimes I don't. Um, but uh, Patreon gets uh, gets all all releases first. Essentially, if you learned something today, please consider joining Patreon. Um, it's uh, through other patrons that uh, you're getting to watch this. All, I mean, all the all the equipment you see, everything that um, made this possible, 
came from uh, generous uh, individuals who said, you know what, I believe in what you're doing. Um, and so you should do so. Plus, right now, you're going to get to see tomorrow night, I am going to be sharing, um, I'm going to take a video of it first, mind you, but as soon as that video gets cut and released, um, if you look back on my live streams throughout the last... Gosh, um, uh, four months. Um, I, I was working on some uh, paintings called the five joyful mysteries and, uh, there you will, you will see a little bit of what I'm about to show. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty mind boggling. Each, each one of those paintings, if you kind of look back and take a look at the past live streams, uh, is installed and I mean really just looking out of this world <laughs> uh, this there's a client kind of recreated a, a church uh, within their home and so those paintings encircle the entire space it's um, it's wild I don't know what else to say uh, worth, worth seeing worth joining just for that fact um, <clears throat> Right, getting a few of these little edges in here deciding hey I like this here I like that there um, I want to put a little bit of a shadow in here I'll probably make it a lot warmer petals peeking out from behind and you know it's always it's always a little sad I mean you know we can reach the, the two hour mark and it's like it's like it's just getting good but can't can't hang around all day I'm duty bound elsewhere Yeah, these moments, uh, just just deciding, um, kind of deciding what to do next. Thing that I will do, uh, just kind of while we're here, I'm gonna take this little this little buffer brush, um, just a little fine, and I've got a few edges I just want to kind of scrub out with it. So that I maybe didn't. I mean, I've got plenty of paint on here. I'm just gonna kind of work these in a little bit. I'm not necessarily wanting to blend everything, but there's a few edges that I... will benefit from. Just bring a little bit of tension. These are primary areas where I still see some of the ground layer that's around here. And 
want to kind of get that mostly covered. While really useful, you know, it's, it's good to put a ground layer down before you start rather than just working on white. Um, you also, the, the little areas where it's still showing up, it can really kind of steal the three-dimensional effect when it's, when it's not kind of properly painted. Probably dive back into this tomorrow. I don't know that I will stream it um, because it, I feel like you know, if you wanted to watch the stream, um, and I recommend you do go back, kind of see some of the decisions I made early on to build this up, and realize that hey, in two hours, you know, you can make a few decisions and have a painting that's nearly there that really only needs. Uh, some attention, some refinement here and there. Um, so definitely go back and spend, spend some time um, checking that out uh, when, when, you, when you have a moment. Okay, I think I mostly got those areas I was talking about. Um, so I'm gonna go and log off now, and uh, my my next move just uh, so I'm, I'm always thinking about okay, what do I do? Uh, what am I gonna do next? You know, I've got about another thirty minutes here before um, I get to go on to dad duty and um, watch the kids. So I'm gonna probably just fill in this this whole area and basically have all the paint down so that I can dive in uh, the next session tomorrow um, and hopefully get a little more refinement here and just see if maybe by tomorrow the painting's wrapped up you know you never know uh, it always just takes sometimes shorter sometimes longer i don't know just varies okay yeah i'm gonna take a step back and take a look did anyone, oh, I see, I see some comments. Sorry, it was pretty quiet. I hadn't uh, like taken a look in a bit. Hey, happy new year. G good to see you, Joan. <laughs> I, I, I'm just uh, wrapping up here, but I appreciate you hanging out. The video will be here as long as there is an internet. So as long as the internet doesn't go away, um, it, it should be here. So I tell you, I tell you Joan, what I, where I'd really like to be is, uh, I'd like to be in Cary and seeing some of, uh, man, the, the hydrangea bushes uh, there were just so amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd love to be there painting some hydrangeas. <laughs> so happy new year, Joan. It's good to see you. I hope, um, I hope everything is going well and you're doing, doing well and staying safe. So, um, well, everyone, uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, tune in uh, next time. I think we're going to refine that portrait that I worked on a couple days ago. I think I want to kind of do one more layer on top of it um, on, on camera, but uh, we'll see. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Uh, God bless everyone, and uh, take care. I'm wearing an umbrella. <laughs> oh, nice. so, so you're telling me it's, uh, it's a little rainy right now. <laughs> uh,
Well, it's uh, it's sunny here uh, and, and quite pleasant. Uh, kids are out there playing with, wow, that was incredible. Oh, they're playing with a little helicopter outside. Uh, pretty fun. Uh, I'm going to go join the fun. So uh, take care. We'll see you. Thanks, Charlotte. Appreciate it.